And I've got something super sick to show you guys today. Please watch this video, comment, share, blah, blah, blah. You're gonna dig this. Have you ever wanted to give your vehicle a distinguished look? You really don't have shit in your pocketbook? Don't worry, I know that's a dumb rhyme. I make them stupid things all the time. Playway's got something tricky, neat for you today. How to make something a little bit cooler than it used to be. Several months ago, we picked up this 2009 Jeep Commander for about 1400 bucks. Towed this sucker about 90 miles with the tow bar without removing the drive shaft. You definitely want to watch that video. I show you how to take any car oh, it with the tow bar even show you exactly why the tow bar works car don't go all crazy completely disassembled the engine added a little bit more pep to a step on some cam shaved some heads poured some pistons over and completely changed the look of this vehicle in this video i'm going to show you how i did all this stuff and tell you how much I got out of 2009 4x4.7 V6 Jeep Commander. Gonna be blown away. Assemble a new motor for it. Stake the valve seats so they don't fall out again. No, we did not let accurate engines do it this time. The last one caught on freaking fire. Because 3,000 miles in, it started getting low oil pressure. And at 5,000 miles, fucking thing blew a ride. Yeah, the story in the video is coming soon on this debauchery. This was fucking ridiculous. Don't send your stuff there. Everybody who works there, but boss is a real shithead. I had a hard time for the last two years keeping my mouth shut. Everybody that works there that's so great, and I really like you guys. I'm sorry if I lose some friends, but Blaney Hassel definitely is a dickbag, liar, cheat, wannabe con artist. Then you know, ever taken your car there? Warranty work? I'll be willing to bet every engine he builds, seven out of ten times, gonna need warranty work. If you watch my show, you know I don't say things like like that about people think there's anybody but accurate engines that i've ever said anything really negative about sorry for my rant let's get back to showing you how to set your vehicle apart from everyone else's with some cool details now we need to make this thing look we magnifique one of the cheapest first things you can do is restore that faded, nasty, black plastic on the side of your car. About everybody has a hair dryer. not everybody has electricity nowadays be a problem for some of you First off, let's get rid of this nasty black faded plastic. Take some soap, rags, paper towel, toilet paper, baby diapers, whatever. Clean it off, have a heat gun. You're probably like, oh, that looks so good and clean. It's like magic, it disappears. Watch what happens when that stuff dries. Still look like shit though. Got some different video to show yo. This method works miracles when the plastic is faded super bad. This particular one I did about six months ago with my heat gun method that I'm about to show you, and it turned out fantastic. And it's held up pretty well. Obviously, we can see some of the fading starting to come back, but if you just redo it, it's gonna look great. To restore any plastic on any automobile, all you do is take the heat gun, hold it about an inch away from there, just moving the molecules in this plastic as they go along. This does last. God, I wish I could afford to fix my face like that. To move on, moving the trim panels on the sides of different types of vehicles. So I can show you how I got that distinctive look on the sides of mine. Easy. So there's two different ways to take these off. You get your tool back there and you pop it back. Careful, sometimes these clips break. Just go to the local store and grab some new ones if they get stuck inside there like that. Take your tool and pop that thing out. Now, there's a couple good reasons for doing this. Way easier to remove the trim than it is to tape it off. It's easier to correct mistakes that you make, so it's easier to get good coverage. Won't look funky. Painting it on the car, gonna look funky. Trust me, I've tried. Professionals can do it. Most of the people that are watching this video are probably amateurs like me. For amateur. Now you use your heat gun method. This doesn't take very long. Once you figure out the distance you need to be away from the material you're working on and you start moving the molecules it'll clean once up once you've got it completely done you want to take some soap and water and clean it off really really well do this i'm going to use a satin primer finish put a link down in the description for this and we're going to clear coat over the top of it but we got a couple more steps to go before we can make this thing look great Just recommend shaking it two minutes no two minutes is usually enough for me this is textured we really technically don't need to scuff it spraying something you want to start off of the product and then gradually go over the top don't be like me tell yourself that you are a robot more like this technique 
Yeah, see, that's the way you should really be doing it. Believe it or not, I didn't get any runs. At least not today, anyway. This one time, falling out the bottom of my pants. Oh, this video's not about that today. So I've got the can about four to five inches away from the product, and I'm spraying on a light coat. That is when I'm actually hitting the piece of plastic with the primer. That's it for 15 to 20 minutes. The second coat on it. If you have any runs in it, some 3,000 grit or 2,000 grit sandpaper and take the runs out of it. We want it to look like this one right here. So I'm going to show you the other steps. I've put two coats on there so far. I think I'm going to go for a third because it's kind of got some light spots in it. You get to the sanding portion, thing you may or may not know. Lower the number, grittier the sandpaper. Higher the number, it's just like age. Finer it is. <laughs> Once that's dry, definitely don't sand it. Definitely. Oh my god, this guy's a freaking idiot. On top of that, he used 60 grit. Now that's gonna turn out like shit. Sometimes when I'm making these videos, because I'm testing stuff out, this is not something I normally do. That's okay, you're gonna be able to learn too. Yeah, see, he completely likes shit. We could definitely fix that though, with some different sandpaper going up on the sandpaper and knocking it back down. Now for the way that we should have done it to begin with. If you do do some stupid shit, make sure you blow it off at least. I'm gonna take some paint thinner and I'm gonna put it on a rag, wipe off the letters. Do not saturate the rag because you don't want this getting down onto your paint. Should have definitely did that first, but I do fuck things up once in a while. Actually, it's quite often. Just edit them out. You may think it's a good idea to paint this with a magic marker. That's what it looks like. Looks like shit. Quite a few affordable ways that you can paint this and it doesn't take a rocket scientist to do it, obviously. Paint marker? this off camera so it's one coat with the paint marker magic marker a quarto marker doesn't look that bad because after a couple minutes it's going to start to dull out a little bit so you want two or three coats even with the paint marker using a paint marker this is what it looks like after the first coat not so good second blotchy coat with the paint marker problem with using the paint marker is you kind of got to blot it on there and let it run out of the paint marker a little bit now of course once this dries we can take some 3000 and knock all these bubbles down and it'll look very consistent. Letter was painted black. This letter was painted with primer. I think the one with primer actually pops a little bit more than the one with just black behind it. See, in order to use the paint marker to get it really thick, I have to let it flow off the tip. It's blotchy. And you could have mistakes just like that, where you have a run down there, and then you're using a Q-tip and some thinner to clean that out. Looks okay. Now with that put on there so thick, it's going to be difficult to sand that down. So you're going to wait an hour or two before you start sanding it down. And I would imagine hitting it with 2,000 or 3,000 is probably going to be your best bet before you start clear coating over the top. But you can grab some of this stuff off the shelf, and it's going to give you a high gloss, or in this situation, a semi gloss look onto this primer panel, which is a really cool looking paint actually on the car. You can go down to your local auto body paint shop for like 20 bucks, buy a two partner coat that has hardener mixed into it. Once again, it's the same procedure. You shake it for two minutes, give yourself as a robot. Oh shit, that's not the right stuff. <laughs> oh, I blame it on being blind. Read that can through the damn camera lens. Oh, I guess I lied. I'm going to use some of this $15 clear coat acrylic that I got from the paint store and we're going to paint over the top of this. Just like I said before, even consistent strokes. Four to five inches away from the material. Once you do this, pin it down a little bit, put on two or three coats, and in each coat, the stuff will look great. I promise, it's gonna definitely last. Think about this, if you foobar that thing, tons of picky parts all over the place, you can just go get more. Give it a try, to lose. It's kind of fun, and it'll set your car apart some. In a couple moments, I'm gonna show you a different technique for painting them raised letters on a car without taking them off. Next panel we're gonna remove, it uses a double-sided adhesive off taping off the vehicle but in case you want to remove it because one side is missing like mine I'll show you how to remove that stuff you can either fix it or paint it when you're using the heat gun method to release the double-sided tape 
you're gonna hold it about one inch away from there. And you need to do this for a considerable amount of time working the energy down the panel, then... If you don't spend enough time heating that tape up, you're gonna be like, Clay, I can just pull that stuff off of there. Well, it leaves a big freaking mess when you don't heat it up. And we're not doing nothing with that garbage. Pull that stuff off. Don't bend it if you're gonna put it back on. And if you don't use the heat, you're obviously gonna be left with a big ass mess. You need to make sure that you get all the glue off the old trim plastic and the vehicle. This is really important or you're gonna look like shit driving down the road with your trim falling halfway off. You also want to make sure that you have the proper double-sided 3M tape. I'm cheap as hell. There's certain things you can't cut corners on. Putting that trim back on, definitely one of them. Be lazy. The right way. The time of making this video, that stuff's only about eight bucks a piece. The link to it down in the description below. To get that glue off, one method is a razor and a heat gun. In this situation, I'm gonna use a little bit different method. To try to get that glue to release easier, try holding the gun at a 45 degree angle and heating up the area really well. You don't have to worry too much if you accidentally touch the body. Don't hold it on there too long. Yes, I'm editing video inside the real office. All the magic happens. You literally held the heat gun onto the body which would be dumb but our owner's manuals used to tell us how to set the timing in our automobiles well, they tell us not to drink the battery acid so oh i suppose i'll leave this part in here just in case the paint is coated with acrylic clear so you shouldn't really hurt anything you just work it around probably for like five minutes that glue up really good it releases and you don't have to do a bunch of extra work Gently pry it off so it doesn't break. It came off on the bottom, so it came off from the top. We could heat that up, pull that off as one strip on the top. On the bottom, we just have a little bit more to clean up. You definitely want to get as much adhesive off of the plastic part, leave it on the vehicle, because it's a lot harder to get off of here than it is to get off the car. And I've got another method, of course, to remove that glue off the car that I'm going to show you next. It's pretty cool. Remove that glue from the side, card eraser. I'll put a link down in the description below amazon link here to go you want to take and rough up this surface with a little bit of sandpaper on the back of here point where you stop using this thing with the drill running you're going to go in at a 45 degree angle start taking this off the battery is running out you want to be careful and you don't dig too deep that will take paint off and so i don't have too much to worry about Now it's like it was never there. Cleaning, that'll be gone. Now we can remove old numbers and letters maybe on the side of your panel van. Stickers that were there from vinyl glue left over. This tool too. Or had old stubborn numbers that have been on a car for a long time. Just take some soap and water, wipe it off. Or as much of the glue as you can, but if you can't get it all off, take one of these erasers, set it on a 45 degree angle. I freaking love this. This is so sick. It doesn't hurt to keep the pad moist on there and rub the crap out of that stuff and it will come off and you will be loving life. And in about five minutes, that shit is gone. We want to follow through with our theme here of a little splash of red just to add a little bit extra. We're going to do this 4x4 four four emblem. No texture to this emblem. So we just hit it with the, some sandpaper on the top of here. Now we don't have to mask this off because one, we're not taking it off. I'm gonna show you a little trick about painting emblems on your vehicle without getting shit everywhere. You can hit the surface with the power tool or just by hand, which will make sure you don't make any mistakes. That roughs it up a little bit, just so the paint has a little bit more to stick to. Literally, I only hit this for five to 10 seconds just to get a little bit of roughness. And in my situation, I'm using a satin primer, and I'm just gonna basically spray it inside these caps. Picked up some foam brushes from Dollar Tree. Now I'll let that dry. I'll apply a little bit more of a coat on there. Dry for like five minutes. Okay, since none of us are perfect, at least I'm definitely not. Although I know you people out there think. Then with the sponge method, you're gonna have a little bit of overage right there. After a couple minutes, you can take a little bit of lacquer, a Q-tip, and clean up around there. Primer's here to make it pop. So a couple coats of primer doesn't hurt anything might not make a difference but the more coats of paint you put on the more sandable it is so depending on your level of finish work you want three or four coats small little emblem it's not the whole vehicle but when they notice it 
be like my missing teeth. I'm gonna critique it. But my dog ate them. I haven't got any more yet. Now let's put some red on. Just spray it in on an angle so your can is upright if you're using a can. Just put a little bit in there. I don't think I need that much. Wanna dab this on here? Don't wanna stroke it on here. Stroke it. For Christ's sakes! Oh, it's not really that big a deal. We'll get paint all over the side of your vehicle like that. Nice. Not what was intended. You don't want to press too much. You just want to go over the top. And yes, it's going to be streaky. But that's okay. Don't worry, we can take that paint off because we haven't put any clear coat on yet. We're all good. Good thing about this is it's not a big deal because we can basically just wipe that off. It's a rag, thinner. We need the thinner, I mean, because this is not coated onto this vehicle yet. So we'll be able to wipe this off right off of here because there's clear coat on the paint of the vehicle doesn't really matter because it's just gonna come right off we're gonna end up clear coating this get close to here we can just use the q-tip and a little bit of thinner good mess up for the video now we want to let this dry just a little bit and then we can take off some of this red that we got on our paint out here and we can tape around it once we clean everything up and make it look nice clear coat that bitch for a couple little bits of 3000 wet sand bam bitches this is gonna look good this is gonna pass the most five foot rules or it'd be like me on it rule i can't see shit my sight's so freaking bad when I look in the mirror. See a handsome, young, rugged man. Bam! When I was doing this, I just put a little bit on here, and I took my fingernail, and I just rubbed around it. I want to get enough of this stuff off of the outside around it so I can throw a little bit of clear on here because it's going to make it last a lot longer. We're going to use an acrylic clear on this. Don't want to clear over dirt. So I'd have to do a little bit better cleaning up around here to get this area so it doesn't look like total travesty and garbage. Time I'm using the thinner to clean up around the area. I just dip it in the thinner and then dip it on the rag. Bam. It looks okay. Nice. It's passable for some guy in a driveway or girl for that matter. Woman is a woman. I don't know. This is definitely my idea of a woman. Patty Ray. Oh, Patty Ray. Again, the only thing that supersedes my ingeniousness is my complete and utter incompetence. I cleaned this up before I started working on it. I'm dumb like that. Guess I was excited. So I sprayed a little bit of simple green onto my on my rag here. Enough so it drip, I hope. Keep away from my letters. So clean this up before you do this. I don't have the dilemma that I got, which is I need to coat this. So all this doesn't chip off. Can't do it because they're coating dirt. Obviously, we disassembled the rest of the car in little bits and pieces and painted them. And the Jeep wouldn't be cool unless it had wheels that matched, plus a grill that had a red insert. So we painted them wheels, grinding them down. The only mistake we made was touching the outside of the tire. That's from the wire wheel right there. But they still look kick-ass. Wouldn't you freaking know it? I didn't even leave the shop. First person that seen that thing bought it. I think it's a lot of money. 189,000 mile vehicle, 8,500 bucks for that thing. Bad weeks worth of work. Oh, I did have it for six freaking months. Had brand new tires, pretty much a brand new motor. New owner, early owned, little old lady from, from Pasadena. Oh, I'm just kidding. It wasn't from Pasadena. It was extremely clean, in very, very good shape for a vehicle with that kind of mileage. The only two options that it didn't have was the larger engine, and leather interior navigation. It had everything else. It was probably worth a lot more money, to be honest with you. For a couple reasons. Have you seen the prices of pre-owned cars? Because now it's going to be internationally known. And if he ever totals this thing out, it's going to be expensive to replace. So keep full coverage on your stuff. At least comprehensive. Take it home so bad he wouldn't even let me clean it. No big deal, though. Still got to save money. Look at this stinking thing. Bam! That thing is sweet not too much not too little keep her looking good and stock welcome the red line jeep command some of them we call the red line because to hit that go anywhere it's the 3.7 v6 i only added about 50 thousandths to the piston size only ground the cam just a little bit but a little bit a little bit more hey, remember no matter what it is in life you think you can or cannot do promise anyone else can do it you can do it too i hope you enjoyed the video please comment down below click the thumbs up while the channel grows god bless folks have the absolute best of days